Hello everybody, welcome to the JavaScript course. In this video, I'm going to discuss a concept called spread syntax. So the spread syntax is able to help us spread an array into individual arguments of a function. And the spread syntax is also able to spread a string into its individual arguments. Also, we can use the spread syntax to copy an object. Also, we can use the spread syntax to combine objects. Now, let us see the HTML file first. The HTML file is very simple. I have a title here and a heading. And this JavaScript file called myscript.js is going to link to the HTML file. And this JavaScript file is stored in the JS folder. Okay. Now, let us go to the JavaScript file. In order for me to use the strict mode, I must type use strict on the first line of the JavaScript file. After that, I'm going to talk about the spread syntax. The purpose of the spread sy syntax is going to spread an array into its individual arguments so that the content can be passed to a function that doesn't accept arrays. It is a bit abstract, so I'm going to use an example to illustrate this point. So suppose I have um, two arrays here, and each of the arrays has different number of elements. The first array has four elements, and the second array has only three elements. And now I'm going to count the number of characters in each of the elements of the arrays. If I want to do so, I can make a function, and the function doesn't need to accept arrays in the form um, shown here. So I can make a function that doesn't accept arrays. So my idea of the function is like this. So you can see that my function doesn't accept any um, parameters. So if I want to use this function to count each of the characters in my given array, I can use a technique called spread syntax, which will be discussed later on. Before doing so, I have to tell you something. Since the function doesn't accept any parameters, in order for the function to um, really store the content obtained after using the spread syntax. I have to make use of the built-in collection called arguments. So the arguments collection is going to store the content passed to the uh, character count function individually. So we will see the effect later on. And after getting uh, each of the words uh, obtained after the spread syntax, I can find the number of characters in each of those words. Okay, so that is my basic idea. And let me show you how I can call this function to apply the spread syntax technique. So I'm going to use three periods to really spread the um, array into individual arguments. So let me show you the approach. So you can see that I can call the function in this way, character count followed by three periods and the array called words. Then in this way, I'm going to split the array into separate argument content, and each of the contents will be um, stored in the collection, which is a built-in one called arguments. Then um, by using this for loop, I'm able to loop over the arguments collection, and then I can take the content of the arguments collection, and then I can get the length of each of the words. So you can expect that uh, line number 17 here is going to give you um, 4, 2, 1, and 3. And for the second um, function call, you can expect that I will have um, 5, two and six. So let us see the result. Save. Reload. Yes, I can get four first. Four refers to the length of this. Two refers to the length of S. One refers to the length of A. Three refers to the length of boy. So um, four, two, one, three can be shown after calling the function using the spread syntax, which is using three dots followed by the array name. 
okay, we can see that the second function call is going to show the character length of each of the words in the new words array. So 5 means today, 2 means is here, and finally I have 6, which means the length of Sunday. So you can see that I can use the spread syntax together with the argument collection, which is a built-in collection, to split my content of the array into individual arguments. So in addition to passing some array into a function that doesn't accept arrays, I can use the spread syntax on strings. So the spread syntax is also functioning properly for iterables like a string. So suppose I have a string like this one, called my string, and I'm able to store the individual characters in an array. And the idea is like this. So I set up a variable called my chars, and it is an array, and the content is just three dots, or three periods followed by my string variable. So in this um, situation, I'm going to split each of the characters in my string into individual characters. So the characters will be stored one by one in the my chars array. Okay. So let us see the result by printing out some of the characters uh, obtained after the spread syntax. So you can expect that um, character 0 here means capital letter J. My, my chars 1 here means the first A in my string. So let us see the result. Save. Reload. Yes, I can get capital letter J, which is the 0 character, which is the first character stored in my chars. And I can get this small letter A to represent the second character stored in the my chars um, array, obtained uh, using the spread syntax. Okay. Now I'm going to tell you the way to use the spread syntax to copy an object. So suppose I've got an object here, and if I do the copying, I want to make a new variable that can have the same key value pairs. So let us see how I can do it. So I just use a new variable called my object copy, and it is going to be of object type. So I set up a pair of curly braces, and inside the curly braces, I put three periods followed by my object name. So in this case, I'm able to uh, spread the key value pairs of the my object object into my object copy object, which is a new one. So I can just um, print out the key value pairs from the uh, copied object in this way. So you can see that I can show the uh, value corresponding to the uh, copied object in this way. My object copy dot property one, my object copy dot property two, and of course property one will be just having value one according to the spread syntax, and value two would be corresponding to property two. So is it so simple? Yes, it is. So let me see the result. Save. Reload. Yes. Um, property one here is just value one. So this is the first key value pair obtained using the spread syntax. And value two is just um, the second value obtained using the spread syntax. So it is quite easy to use the spread syntax to do the copying of an object. Finally, I'm going to discuss the way to use spread syntax to combine objects. Now I have two objects called object A and object B, and I'm going to set up a new object that is a combination of the key value pairs obtained from each of the objects. So you can see the combination is as follows. I set up a new object name called object AB, and I set up a pair of curly braces. Inside the curly braces, I set up three dots followed by object A, comma, space, 
um, three dots followed by the second object name called object D. So by setting the uh, object using this uh, spread syntax, I'm able to first um, copy the key value pairs from object A. And then I can copy the key value pairs from object B. And now I'm going to show the uh, entries of the object A, B by using the object.entries um, uh, built-in function. Save. Reload. Yes, you can see that the first key value pair is shown here, obtained from object A. The second key value pair is shown here, obtained from object A. The first key value pair from object B here, and the second key value pair obtained from object B is shown finally. So you can see that the order is um, obtained according to the order shown in object A and object B. Since I do object A first, the object A key value pairs will be shown followed by those in uh, object B. Okay. So this video has already talked about the use of spread syntax. When we use spread syntax, we are essentially spreading an array into individual arguments. So we just decompose an array or we decompose an object depending on what you have currently. So if I want to um, spread an array, I can put um, each of the um, elements of an array into um, individual consideration by using the um, built-in collection called arguments. Okay, so if I want to do the character counts, I can use the built-in collection called arguments to store the result coming from the spread syntax. Okay. Here I'm also able to spread a string into individual characters by using the, the spread syntax. So the spread syntax is just uh, three periods. Okay. By using the spread syntax, I'm also able to copy an object like this one. And also I'm able to combine objects using the spread syntax. So I just um, use three dots followed by the first object, comma, and then I do the uh, same um, syntax for the second object. Then I'm able to store each of the key value pairs from both objects in into my um, new object. This is the end of the video. If you have any questions about my video, please leave your questions on the comment section below the video. If you like this video, please give me a like and please subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.